Yet another PS5 with no power. This is a CFI 1215A. Yeah, CFI 1215A. Oh, and we get a beep. We hit the power button. We hear the eject button, but we are not getting a boot. So the story is somebody already took this apart and I wanna say installed a different power supply and that did not solve their problem. And in my experience, it's rarely the power supply, but can't say never, except in this case, we know that the power supply did not help. So let's go ahead and tear this down, see what the inside looks like. Now I've had them act like this because of the disk drive before. So let's see if it's any different with the disk drive removed or disconnected or both. Still not even getting a light over here. And let's just make sure there are no signs of life. It's not generating an image and we just keep getting the beep so I think we're minus power somewhere that would be my guess I don't think the power supply is the issue but I suspect a missing power rail probably is All right, so let's see what we have here. And of course, power supply says 12 volts, so. Okay, EDM 30, what do we know? Well, uh, when it's plugged in, we should have five volts at F7001. So let's take a look, put my black probe on ground and we'll see, where are you? There we go, okay, so over here we have, are we plugged in? We're not plugged in, okay. Okay, so we have five volts there. Um, we should have our 3.3 because we heard the beep, but you know what, let's just verify. Down here where our power, ca our, uh, power button cable plugs in, we should have three volts, yeah, that's an odd angle. Get ground. Okay, so we should have 3.3 right over here, which that is close enough. We know we have 12, obviously. And let's see, I think we have a two. Let's check, where is it? Okay, is it right here? I think we've also. Oh, that's not it. Okay, over here, just moving across the board, I believe we should have five volts, although I have reverse polarity because I switched my probes. Okay, so we got five volts here. and 1.8 on this side and if we move down I'm not gonna worry about the fan I'm sure we have our 12 volts there uh, let's see I think right over here which is this the same chip as I I don't know okay so right over here we should have we should also have 5 volts do not have 5 volts right here yeah, that's ground it's supposed to have five volts here and then over here look at that we have 0.149 that seems strange 0.014 and 
I think we have a problem. We have 0.251 volts there, and I know that's that all looks kind of goofy. But most importantly, you do not have five volts here. And in fact, I think that cap looks a little funny. Looks a little odd. I don't know if that's normal, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the power off. Cut the power to the board. Put this in continuity mode just to rule out a short right over here and we have a short right over here all right so is it that cap hmm um it does look a little i don't know you know it looks a little funny but I, some of these caps sometimes i have a different color to them so i'm not going to assume this is the problem but more importantly this line this 5 volt line goes through a filter on the other side of the board so we're gonna have to take the board out either way um, you know what let's take this cap off and see if that does relieve the short and if it does we still gotta pull the board because I'll bet you that filter probably is gonna be blown So we'll get some leaded solder on here, make our lives a little bit easier. And with the tweezers, this should come off without too much drama. All right, don't want to lose that. So we'll set it right here on some flux. A little more flux. All right. And you caught me using my crappy tweezers. I do that sometimes. All right, so let's see if uh, this is still going to ground. And it is. So, we have a short, but it is probably not this cap, even though it looked kind of sick. All right. So, this cap is good. And for the record, since we have it off, let's do this. Because I don't know who's, if anyone's mapped this yet, but it looks like... I'm having a hard time making contact here. Uh, it's always tricky without flinging it across the room. Okay, that looks like a 10 microfarad cap. And that's a 5 volt line, just in case anyone is wondering and needs to replace that in the future. This one looks okay. Um, and this isn't going to be the ground, because that's, yeah. So, we'll put this back on. I'm going to check the opposite side and see if we can figure out where that short is coming from. Yeah, it's going to be hard, hard to get enough heat on this board like that, so go back to the tweezers. Alright, I'm going to pull this board and we'll look at the other side in just a second. Alright, so on the flip side here, we have that 5 volt rail that goes to F7502, and if we check here, ground. I'll put my probe on ground here. And of course, we have ground on this side. 
and what? Okay, and we do not have ground over here. So yes, that filter is blown. Let's just check in diode mode for the heck of it. And see what the value of this line is. We should have about 0.39-ish. And over here, we are straight to ground. So with any luck, it should be one of these three. Um, if not, things will be more complicated. I wish that this little test point or whatever you want to call it, this solder point was over here. That would make life a little easier. So um, I think I'm just going to pull one of these off. Actually, you know what? We might be able to do this without removing any of the uh, capacitors. I will just rig up my power supply. I'm going to pause this for a second. All right, so sometimes if you're being lazy like I am right now, you can clip one part of, uh, well, basically clip your ground clamp like this. Ah, can we get it on camera? Okay. So I'm just going to clip one side of my power supply to the negative, which will be edge of the board right there. There's nothing on the other side in the way. And then over here, I'm just going to clip literally a straight pin. And when I touch this side, we should be drawing current. Yeah, and we didn't have to solder anything. So hopefully, I'm only injecting one volt at 0.5 amps. I don't know if that'll be enough. You might have to raise it up, but you get the idea. We'll put some freeze spray down here. Hopefully, remember where we're at. Okay, we're drawing 0.372 amps. And none of those are getting hot. <laughs> All right. Let's try a little more voltage here. Actually, we'll just do one amp. Could still be the other side of the board where the problem is. In fact, I'm starting to think that may be the case. So let's check over here. I hope it's not whatever that is because I do not have a replacement for this. Let's see. I can't read it yet. I'll check it out in a minute. First, let's see if we can get any signs of heat over here. I mean, that's the only thing that would make sense, right? It'd have to be this cap, and we've already ruled that out. So, if it's this IC, that'll be a bummer. Okay, so if we stick this right over here. Okay, I'm only drawing 0.167. Yeah, that's not going to do it. All right, we're going to have to attach a wire so we can have a little more flexibility. I am still kind of thinking that one of these might be the culprit. I hope. So you know what? I'm going to uh, take the center one off. Sometimes when you solder a wire on here, it's easy to damage these. Don't want to do that. And I don't know what the value of these are. They're probably 10 microfarads also, but I do not know that for a fact. Okay, let's see. Do we still have a short? What? Ha ha ha. All right, I'm going to turn this on. Look at that. Didn't have enough heat to detect it. We would have if I had increased the voltage and amperage, but I just happened to get lucky. And. We are back to 0.33, so that is our bad cap. So he needs to go, and this needs to go. So I'm going to need to dig up a fuse for this, and hopefully 
that'll be the end of it. All right, I'm going to take care of this right now. All right, let's get the good tweezers. This is dumb. Get this filter while we're here. And I will steal that from a donor board. Now I'm not sure if it's normal to take longer than usual to boot up after this type of failure, but for some reason I did not get an image out of this thing until the point where I reached over and grabbed the HDMI port to make sure it was plugged in securely. So I'm not sure if it's coincidence or if maybe it was just not properly plugged in, but uh, at the end here I'll speed this up and you'll see that it actually did finally give us an image.